Hi everybody and welcome back to Every Stitch Counts. My name is Charlotte and I am the maker and creator behind Every Stitch Counts. On this channel I talk mostly about my knitting and any other creative fiber related content that I get myself up to. but. Who knows, in the future I could find and see myself doing pretty much anything on this channel, but for now it's mostly about the knitting and the making. In this episode I wanted to do something a little bit different than what I've done in the past. Typically what I've done is podcast style videos, and in this video I actually wanted to talk to all of you about 12 free beginner friendly knitting patterns that you can find on Ravelry. When I first started knitting seriously, like garments and sweaters and whatnot, I was about 22, 23, and I had found some patterns on Ravelry in the past, but mostly I was just incredibly overwhelmed by the thousands, if not millions, of patterns that are available on Ravelry. For those of you that don't know, Ravelry is an open source knitting and crochet website where designers, both experienced and brand new, and even just regular people who are knitting can post their projects and can post designs that they've come up with. You can get really pretty much anything in terms of quality of pattern, style, era of pattern that you could possibly think of on Ravelry. And it is overwhelming, <laughs> to say the least, if you are not familiar with designers or if you don't know where to look for convenient patterns that you know are going to just be well-fitting and something that's within your skill range. For me, when I was in the position of being a new knitter, I wasn't particularly skilled yet. I didn't know how to read patterns very well. I just wanted simple sweaters I knew would look halfway decent when they were done and didn't come with the pressure of having to purchase them. I find that when anyone is starting anything new, I'm really hesitant to invest a lot of money into it. And knitting is something that, you know, it takes a lot of money, or at least it can. It takes the tools and the materials to make the project, it takes finding the pattern, it takes the time to do it, and it really adds up to a pretty large investment for this one garment. I would consider all of the sweaters that I'm going to mention as beginner friendly. They're all pretty simple constructions, either top down or very simple bottom up. I think that the fit looks pretty good in almost all of the pattern photos that I've seen, and even in some of the project photos on Ravelry. The patterns that I'm going to share with you in this video range from fingering weight yarns all the way up to Aran weight. There's going to be anywhere from one to three patterns per weight of yarn. So I think there's like two fingering weight patterns, for example, and three DK weight. Disclaimer, I have not knit all of these patterns. I have not actually made the garment of these patterns. I probably will in the future because some of them I think look really excellent and right up my alley. So take it with a grain of salt. These are just patterns that, you know, looks like a pattern that I would recommend someone make. I know size inclusivity is very important. I tried my best to find patterns that had a pretty decent size range. Some of them are a bit deceiving because there may only be like six sizes, for example, but they do have have an actual garment measurement of say 65 inches, which I think is pretty decent. It may not be the best in terms of size inclusivity. I know there are some patterns that go higher than that, but given that these are free, you may, you could maybe do some simple modifications like using a larger gauge if you needed a bigger size than that. I think these are pretty good. So just take that with a grain of salt. The first sweater that I want to start with is a fingering weight sweater and it is by Espis Tricot and it's the gingerbread sweater. I thought this was really cute. It's a top-down sweater that is a fingering weight yarn. It's a raglan design. It has a really subtle balloon sleeve effect which I think gives it this really classic feminine but also makes it a little bit more modern than just a straight sleeve design. It has a little split hem on the bottom that you could obviously leave out if you didn't want that but I think it adds a really cute touch. And I also really love the way that this one is styled in her photos. Like she has the photo with the book and it hits 
her waist. It's a very vintage cut in terms of where it hits her on her waist. It's not a crop top. I just think it fits her really well and it looks like it would fit a pretty wide range of people. She knit it in Knitting for Olive Merino, which is a really, I think, dupe friendly yarn. There's lots of yarns on the market that are cheaper than that one that are comparable. It's just a simple, non superwash merino wool. You could use pretty much any type of wool. You could also really easily use a light fingering weight yarn held with a mohair or a surrey to give it a more fuzzy effect. It has a pretty good range of sizes. It goes all the way up to a 64 and a 64 and a quarter inch bust. The other thing that I always look at, what some of the projects looked like. And I thought the projects on this looked pretty good. Projects, you have to take with a grain of salt, in my opinion. Anyone can post a project. So someone who picks maybe a yarn that isn't as well suited or picks a color that really doesn't make the, the pattern or the sweater shine, in your opinion, can really dissuade you in choosing a pattern. I would say trust the design. If you know how to pick a yarn and, and match a yarn with a sweater, odds are you're gonna make something that looks close to the designer's version. So look at the projects, but don't choose based on the projects. There were some really beautiful projects in here as well for this one. The second sweater is by Tetsi Lutzik, and it's definitely one of her earlier designs. Her hair is totally different, but I was really shocked to find that she actually had a free sweater on here that was a fingering weight and it's called Tetti's Mini Pullover. It's very simple. It's very dainty and elegant looking. It's a top-down raglan design. The raglans are just really simple eyelets that you do with a yarn over and knit two together, typically. And it has a pretty wide kind of scoop style neckline that I think is really pretty. It looks really flattering. In terms of sizes, she does it a bit like the ranunculus sweater. You essentially do it by gauge. So depending on the gauge that you want, that indicates the size that you want. So she did this based on a fingering weight yarn and that gave her a size small. She walks you through how to get the different sizes based on your gauge. So it's slightly more complicated. It's not as straightforward as the other sweater, but I thought it was still worth mentioning because if you go into any yarn store, the people there will be able to help you with the gauge and be able to help you with the size of what you need. And I thought it was just a really beautiful design. Projects I saw worth giving a go, maybe for the confident beginner. I would say do this one. For everybody, do the first one for fingering weight. Sport weight. This is the 21615 Scent of Rain sweater by Drops Design. This is a sport weight sweater. Drops always has a small all the way up to a triple XL, which again is not the best in terms of size inclusivity, but pretty decent. It doesn't say how this was constructed, but it looks like it was a top down. I'd be so shocked if this was anything other than a top down. So simple construction. The texture that you see on here is just a series of knits, pearls, and then slip stitches. So skipping a row, slipping the stitch, and then carrying it. And that's what gives that raised knit stitch texture on the yoke of this sweater. Projects, there aren't too many, but especially this first one, this purple guy, I just thought it looked really nice. It's yoked sweaters can tend to fit quite a few different people and body types. So I thought that this was a great one to mention. It's definitely one that I would recommend to people if they were wanting to maybe knit the petite knit pattern, but don't want to purchase the pattern. Try this one. It'll give you that same effect. We're on to DK weight sweaters, my personal favorite. I think a lot of people knit in DK weight sweaters. A lot of popular designers, you know, a lot of the patterns that you see now are knit in DK weight. Slightly lighter weight than worsted. This sweater is one that I've seen actually a couple other podcasters talk about. It is the Autumn League Pullover by Alexandra Tavel. It looks like it was originally published in a magazine, but now it's free. It was published in 2018. She uses a very affordable yarn, the Lion Brand LB collection. Lion Brand is a pretty affordable yarn. Has a DK weight. 
This is a very simple crew neck raglan. It almost looks like a sweatshirt, the, the little detail that she has on the neck. And I just think it's really cute. She does a folded over collar, very simple, just knit stitch raglan. And then she has this, I guess you would technically call it a cable detail that makes the V for the front of the neck band. Split hem. It's just really, really cute and very classic, incredibly simple. This is probably one of the simplest sweaters that's here. And I think they're all decently simple, but this is one that it would be hard to probably hate it at the end. <laughs> like even if it doesn't fit perfectly or if the neckline isn't perfect, if it's too big or slightly too small, it probably still will look decent, which I think is something that, you know, beginners are drawn to. I was definitely drawn to that those kind of projects when I first started. I think this would be really pretty in all black or in a cream, something that's just going to be so timeless. The projects also look really good. And, then, and there's a ton. There's like 1,400. I would say most of the projects look really good. They all fit well. They fit a really wide range of body types. There aren't really any when you come to photos that are actually on people. There aren't many I find that look bad. I really, really liked that one. And it's free, so can't get any better than that. No, you can't. This next one, I actually think I'm gonna make. Hopefully I cast this on before the end of this year. I have a lot of stuff on the needles that I need to finish, but this one is awesome. And I actually have seen this, I saw this a while ago. It's called The Classic Sweater by Espes Trico. It's so good. First of all, can we just look at how beautiful the photos are? Like, aesthetic amazing. It's just so good. The original yarn is a light fingering weight held with a mohair. Uh, she uses Isayer yarn, uh, the alpaca too, and then Isayer silk mohair. You could definitely again use something cheaper. This is one of those sweaters that I think would just work well with a lot of yarn. I think the Barocco alpaca yarn would do beautiful with this project. And that yarn is already a DK weight, so you wouldn't technically need to do the, the mohair if you didn't want to. I'm a pretty tight knitter, so I might actually still reach gauge if I use a DK and a silk mohair. The alpaca, I think, already has that kind of fuzz factor. And I actually really like the Barocco Vintage alpaca yarn, and I think that would be a pretty affordable but still nice quality yarn that would work really well with this. Um, she has a really well-rounded uh, range of sizes. She goes all the way up to about a 64-inch bust. So if you wanted less ease, you could technically make a size that's a little bit smaller than you and vice versa. Projects on this sweater are also really nice and there are a lot of them so you can get a good sense of what the finished project's gonna look like. You have people that have done it just a crew neck, you have people that have done it with just a mock neck and not a full turtleneck, you've had people do full-blown turtlenecks, you really have the gambit in terms of what people have done with the neckline. Top-down raglan, so easy. I think this is just a really timeless piece. It's one that like I want now. I want to wear it right now. And it's something I would probably never get rid of. It would never go out of style. That's something that I <laughs> need to work on more because I tend to get really drawn to specific patterns or looks where I just think something is like so beautiful. It doesn't necessarily always mean that it's the most classic, long lasting style that's available out there. And I always find myself wishing I had more timeless classic pieces in my wardrobe. So I think this is my cue to do more of that. Okay, the last DK weight sweater. This sweater is the Juntu sweater by Tina Hutanaimi, I believe. Please don't butcher me in the comments. Uh, I may have mispronounced that. Beautiful pattern. It was published in 2023, so very recent. It's a pretty good range of sizes. Not the best I've seen. Um, it goes all the way up to a 56 and three quarters inch bust. So it's okay. 
It is designed to have a lot of positive ease. It says here it has 12 inches. You really have to take into consideration how much ease is designed into the pattern. You could maybe be a couple sizes larger than what they list here and you only want four inches of positive ease. You don't want it to hug your body, but you also don't want to like be swimming in all this fabric. That's not the look that everyone wants. And I think there's definitely projects on here where people have done that. They've knit something clearly with way less ease, which I think is good to see. And the projects look really good. Love that there is the option for you to do a mock neck neckline, or you can do a wider neckline, more of a boat style neckline. Really easy, simple, it's knit top down all in one piece. It's really beginner friendly and you could use a really simple affordable wool for this. I think there's a couple wools by Juniper Moon that I think would work really well with this pattern. Um, nothing too sleek but they have a nice bit of airiness to them. Really you could use so many different types of, of wool or yarn for this sweater, which is really why I picked it. There were quite a few free DK patterns, but this is one that I could actually see myself knitting up and wearing. And so that's why I put it on here, because she's cute. We're into worsted weight, which my very first sweater, I think was a worsted weight yarn. So that's kind of fun. This is the Psy Pullover by Cindy Craig, and this was published in Cascade Yarns website in 2021. So that she uses Cascade yarn in a superwash, very affordable yarn. You could use, you know, a Cascade non-superwash yarn. You could use any worst weight yarn for this and it would probably look nice. She has a pretty good size range here. 33 bust all the way up to 67. That's pretty good considering it's free and she designs it to have four inches of positive ease so it's meant to be a more classically fitted jumper which again I like. I love that she has a little bit of interest in some of the details you know it's not just a super straightforward crew neck sweater. Uh, there are so many of those. This sweater actually has a bit of interest going on it has a double rib, a two by two rib with a like a raw hem over the top of it. So it kind of folds over. It looks like she has a raglan, maybe a seed stitch raglan, which is kind of cool. It's a very easy sweater, obviously very beginner friendly, but it does have a bit of interest and detail that you don't always see in like beginner friendly sweaters. It's a really I think clever way to give a bit more detail in a very simple sweater while keeping the design and the stitches that you're using incredibly simple. Projects also look good on this. You know, there aren't a ton. The ones that are on here, I think look nice. And I think they fit well. I think they'd fit a wide range of people well. Knit this. Someone should make this and tell me how it went because I have too much to do and I haven't, haven't made this yet. <laughs> The second worsted weight pattern is a sweater. It's called Sweet Weekend and it's by Drops Design. And it's a DK with a lace weight yarn held together. They use Drops yarn, which is again, a pretty affordable yarn. This was released in 2022 and it's a very simple two by two hemmed collar turtleneck sweater. It looks like it was designed a bit different than a raglan, but all in all pretty easy and you would most likely knit the back panel with some increases and then do the front and then combine it at the under portion and do the rest seamless and then you would pick up for the sleeves and knit the sleeves in the round. That would be my guess of how you would do this. Very simple. It may look a little bit more intimidating because of this detail that she has here, but it's really, it's, it's pretty simple. This is also one that I would make. Just timeless, just a nice turtleneck sweater, very cozy. <sighs> okay, <sighs> been talking so much. <laughs> there are four more sweaters that I'm gonna talk to you all about. We're moving into air and weight sweaters, so close to, you know, bulky weight yarns. And this next one is probably, it's very different than a lot of the ones I've mentioned so far. It's by Heidi Kermeyer. She's an excellent designer, by the way. 
Uh, that has, she has a ton of other really great patterns if you're interested. This pattern is the Simple Summer Tweed Top Down V-neck. It's all, as it says, top down raglan. The only difference is you're doing a V-neck construction. So usually when they do that, you're knitting flat for the first portion of the yoke, and then you join when your V-neck, wherever you want that to hit your, uh, what is this? What is this called? Your, this part, this part of your body, <laughs> your chest, <laughs> whatever. And then you join in the round and you continue down seamless and then you pick up the sleeves. She originally uses a Rowan yarn, but again, I mean, she puts a lot of suggested yarns on here, probably because she has a couple different options for people. There's almost no seaming, so there is a tiny bit of seaming on this sweater. This free pattern also comes with options for men and women, which I think is pretty cool. And she has a couple different options for the neckline. So you can do, you know, a V-neck, you can do a crew neck on this sweater. It's all pretty much knitting. Like, I don't even really see a hem on this. I can't quite tell how she does that neckline. You definitely wouldn't be doing anything other than knitting and purling on this. This sweater, holy cow, talk about a lot of projects. There are almost 3,000 projects on here. They all look pretty great. People have definitely taken some liberties with what they add to the sweater and how they make it unique to them, which I think is also a testament to the pattern and her skill in writing the pattern. People definitely feel like they can modify it a little bit. There's room with this sweater. This is probably one of those sweaters that you could make more than once and each time it could be a little bit different and so you're technically getting more than one sweater with this pattern which I think again for beginners just starting out or people who just don't want to spend a bunch of money on patterns all the time and just want to make a normal sweater they don't want it to think too hard about it this would be a great option for you really cute stuff in here oh this makes me want to knit I'm doing that after this this next one I didn't realize that my favorite yarn shop ever the Lamb and Kid uh, wrote their own designs, but they do, and I found one. This is their fancy sweater, and uh, first of all, the Lamb and Kid always has just stupendous photos. They look so good. This bright cherry red crew neck sweater, I was like, I need that immediately in my life. I need to wear that right now. So maybe, maybe I'll take a trip to go go get me some of that this weekend. Probably not. I can't spend money. I gotta, I gotta reel it back, guys. <laughs> this is a very simple sweater. This originally uses their Big Birdie yarn, which is Aran Waite Surrey yarn. I've actually never used it, but I've heard nothing but incredible things about it. I've used their Lace Weight or Fingering Weight Surrey, and I love it. You can download it on Ravelry. It's also available on their website. It comes in eight sizes. The largest bust circumference of this, like the finished garment measurements, goes up to 62 inches. So, again, size inclusivity, it's such a big point now for good reason. Like, people should be able to find patterns that they can fit are the right size for them. I think that 62 inches, pretty decent. This is one of those sweaters that just is very classic. There's a good number of projects for you to look at. The one that I actually really made me want to put this in the roster is this striped one. I just thought it was so cute. With the black and that beige color, I was like, ooh, so classic. What else do I want to say about this? You should knit this. Knit this and tag me in it. I want to see how it comes out. <laughs> All right, we're into the beloved bulky. I feel like I, well, yeah, I think in my very first video, I had a vest by Well Love Knits, and that was a bulky weight pattern. And it's nice to use bulky weight yarn every now and again. I'm not super, I don't use it a lot anymore, but in the beginning, when you're starting out, you know, you have to buy less of it. You finish your project so much faster. You get that sense of, wow, I made this faster than if you're using some of these other yarns. So I thought this was a great option. This sweater, the Winter League Pullover, is by the same woman who designed the original pullover that it had that little sweatshirt detail. This is just in a bulky weight yarn, which I think is really nice. So you can knit it lightweight or you can knit a really heavy, chunky 
sweatshirt style that is the same design and it looks just as good as the worsted weight one. Top down raglan, has that fun detail on the neckline, has the split hem detail at the bottom. Yeah, you know what you're getting with this and I like the fact that you could make a really lightweight one or you could make one that's a little bit heavier. The last sweater, this is Firth by Baracco Design Team. So Baracco is a yarn company that makes a lot of different yarn and this is their pattern. It was released in 2019. It looks like they use their Pure Wet yarn, which I've not used before, but I have seen it and it's pretty affordable. The sizes available are from a bust 37 to all the way up to a 64. So pretty standard good range of sizes. It's a yoke construction, so there's no raglan increases. You just essentially knit a circle and then split for sleeves and then keep knitting straight down on your tube and then you knit your sleeves. And I think that it fits her well. I think probably what I would do if it's feeling like too tight, obviously it's meant to be a fitted sweater and I think it fits her really well. If you didn't want something that fitted, you have a couple of options. You can increase your needle size just for the yoke, and then you can go back to the regular needle that they recommend for the body, and that can help compensate for the size. You can also make your yoke depth a little bit deeper. In this photo, I think it's a very simple, very beginner-friendly good pattern, but it might be one that you have to try on because it's not designed to have a lot of ease. Sweaters with a lot of positive ease can be more forgiving in terms of fit because you have so much wiggle room built into the pattern. This one maybe have less, so I would probably recommend that if you're going to make this, just take it off the needles, you know, when you're halfway done with your yoke and then when you think you're done with your yoke and try it on and see where it's hitting you in your armpit and if you're happy and comfortable with that um, because you would hate to get all the way through it and have it not be comfortably fitting you. There aren't that many projects for this but the projects that I see I think again they fit really well especially this pink one. It looks like she used like a teddy bear kind of yarn and I thought that was actually really cute. It reminded me of sweaters that I saw in like the mall maybe like 10 years ago but are kind of coming back. This would be a hard sweater to to mess up and to, that would I don't think it would go out of style. I just think it's a classic easy sweater. Okay, that is it for this episode. I really hope that you all liked this. I hope that some of you found it helpful and I hope that if you have friends that are looking to get into knitting or maybe wanting to start dipping their toe into making garments, you share this with them and this gives them some idea of maybe where to start. They're all things that I think if I had a million hours in the day and unlimited time, I would absolutely see myself making and wearing any of these sweaters. So I hope you appreciated this. I hope you liked it and found it helpful. You don't need to break an arm and a leg or sell your soul to the fiber lords <laughs> to knit and to make sweaters. It's accessible to everybody and these free patterns and the designers that put in the time and just distribute it for free make that possible for people. So let's give a round of applause to the real heroes of this video. <laughs> if you're so inclined, please leave a thumbs up on this video and subscribe. I will see you next time and let me know what you think in the comments and if you're gonna make any of these sweaters. Until next time, this is Every Stitch Counts. Bye.